Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sub-30 series. I'm sure you know who I am by now. And this episode is episode 3. We will be discussing spring strats today. Um, I have some disclaimers before we get started though. First off, this episode is unoriginal. I am not taking credit for this. I did not find or discover any of these. This is just a compilation video of spring strats. Now what exactly are spring strats? They are a method that Minecraft Bedrock speedrun is used to get into the stronghold before even going into the nether. Usually the first three strongholds closest to the origin will, well, zero, zero, will be under a village, and we can use bells to determine exactly where that is, as I will show you, hence the name Spring Strats. Um, this results in stronghold first runs, which the current world record of 1341 is. And this is even useful even if you don't go to the stronghold first, um, sometimes you will throw an eye and it will head toward a village, and you can save an eye just by doing spring strats and digging down there. Um, in case you don't think that I fully described everything well enough or you need additional help, I will have a playlist of spring strats in the description. Typically, you would dig down um, at around 600 or so away from the origin or greater. I would say that cutoff is probably not until about 3,000 blocks or so, and I want you to aim for the hot spots. So specifically, 800, 800, and 200, 800. Positive, negative, anyway. Now, that only results in about 10 to 12% chance of finding the stronghold. And as the sign on the right says, if there's not a stronghold there, you won't hit it. I can't make strongholds appear for you. But 10 to 12% might seem low. However, this is how you, this is how, if there's a stronghold there, you can hit it every single time. Springs, the, these spring strats are generally very insane <laughs> and um it's about it like a hidden gem on minecraft bedrock so the 700 300 village also has a pretty good um, track record of providing you with a stronghold and that could be positive negative negative positive you know any orientation you want it to be and we will be doing a whole lot of this plus four plus four to x and z coordinate and it's going to be different in every circumstance so please don't just say, oh, he went to the top right. And, you know, it's it's not going to be the top right because you didn't actually add four and add four. You just repeated what I did, which isn't what I want you to do. So this is the first bell that I will teach you. This is the plain circle because it doesn't have the little canopy thing on top. So you see it has a little fountain here. And it's pretty standard. But you're just going to want to find the side that the bell is on. And you can see the bell is on the right. There's a block with a torch on the left. And you're just going to want to stand on the block with the torch. It's going to be to the right of the bell by two blocks. And when you're standing here, the bell is um, on your left by two blocks. What you're going to want to do from here is go right three blocks and add two. Now, this is where the four, four comes into play. You're going to want to add four to each coordinate, the X and the Z. So we would be looking for 756 on the X coordinate and 893 on the Z in this specific instance. All right, negative 893, because you wouldn't be looking for a negative 901 because it's actually taking away 4. Because that's how negatives work. Ugh. So we're going to try to go up here. You see that's the wrong way because our x went down. Now we're going to try to find the z, and you see that adds 1 to both coordinate from the point where we started calculating. So that's 1, 2, 3. We're going to take away the water. And this redstone block is 4 in each coordinate. And you can see if we fall really far down, there's the stronghold. And you will always hit within one block of the starter staircase. Very impressive. However, um, not all of these villages in this seat actually do have strongholds. I'm just telling you where you would dig down if there was a stronghold there. So please try to dig at least 600 blocks away from the origin, away from zero, zero, and probably from about 600 to 3,000, aiming for the hot spots. So this next one is the same concept. We call this one the village or the, well, it is a village, but the plains square. But it's the same concept. You look for the bell here. You stand on the right-hand side. The bell would be three to your left and two, one back. Three, three blocks to the right, two blocks forward. And you're just going to want to do the same four, four. This way improves our Z, and this way improves our X. So one, two, three, and that is where you dig down at the redstone block. Moving on to our next... One. This one is the Plains Tree, the Plains Flat, the Plains Double Bell, I've seen it called sometimes. I don't know. 
but it's often referred to as a flat. The plane's flat. It has a tree, though. This one will be a little bit difficult to explain, but you're looking for, in front of these, the cobblestone stairs that are facing at you, not the ones that are facing cornered, but the ones that are straight. You want to look for a cobblestone or mossy cobblestone that is right where my cursor is right now. You see that one is a path block. That will not work. We're looking for one of the four cardinal directions. That one is also a path block, so nope. That one is also a path block. So this last one here, mossy cobblestone or cobblestone, it works. And you're going to want to look for that very edge block. Um, you could also look for this shape. I'm not going to describe it, but that's the shape. And you want to stand in this block. You do not have to go up three or over two. You just have to calculate four and four. So um, not that way. We're going to go this way. And that way is one, two, three, and that is where you dig down. Now going four and four, you can do it like up and over, but diagonally is preferred. This one is the Plains Triple Tent. And this one is a lot like the tree flat that we just went over. There's three tents. So there's the side on the right with the bell from where we're standing. What you want to do is you want to go on the side opposite from the bell. Or what, or what you could also do is stand, as I'm going to do right here, stand on the one that's facing not the way the other two are facing, and then look for the run on the right. When you're on the run on the right, go, go past the back right um, fence post there, stand right here, and just like the tree flat, you don't need to go up three or over two. You just need to calculate plus four and plus four to both coordinates. So you can see that one's one two, three, and four. That is where you would dig down. Moving on, we have our um, Taiga variants next. This one is the Taiga square well. There's only, there's only two Taiga, so this um, this one's pretty cool. So it has the bell. It's the same setup. You might think we're doing the same thing, but this one is a little bit different. They're going to get generally more complex as we go on. But this one, you'd be standing on the left side, and you're going to want to start on the same block as the fence post here. You're going to want to stand on the left side of the bell instead of the right side, and you're going to be starting, again, with this fence post. The bell should be two to your right, so one, two, three to the left, and two up. And again, you're just going to want to add four to each coordinate. So you see this way does it, and that way does as well. One, two, three, four, and that redstone block is where you're going to be digging down to. Our next one is a little bit tricky if you're looking at this thinking, oh, how are we going to do this? There's one bell. There's one bell and nothing else. Well, let me break it down. So there's one bell. And you see the, like the little stony sides of the bell? Like there's one pointing toward the path and there's one pointing toward the farm. You're going to want to look at the one that's pointing not toward the farm, but to the path. There's always going to be this really long pathway here. And there's going to be this way. And that doesn't really mean much, but the stony side points to the path that way. And you're going to want to stand parallel with it on the same block. And you're going to, want to move over three to the right. right and you're, going to start one, you're going to start with the bell. Don't stand on the side of it. Start with it. So that would be three. Now you're going to go up ten. You can use your coordinate for this one. It would be either your X or the Z, and you just add both. And I actually start flying away here, but I did add ten. <laughs> so now... When you're here, you again just have to add 4 to your X and your Z. And that is where you would dig down. And moving on, we have our desert variants next. Um, deserts, I believe, have half of the chances as Plains Villages do. Um, Plains Villages are pretty common, and luckily they're pretty easy too. But this is the um, desert square, you just want to go over left, left two, up three, same thing as the Taiga square, and then four, four from here. When you're standing on the left side, the bell should be two blocks in front of you. That is where you would dig down, adding four and adding four. Next, we get to the desert circle. This one is a little bit tricky because it is, it is just like the, um, the, the Taiga singular bell. So you're going to want to stand right here, and the bell should be two blocks to the left. And you're going to want to go over three from this. 
and then 10 blocks up. And again, I would totally use my coordinate for this, but you see we are here at 1030, um, negative 1030, and we're going to go to negative 1040. Next, 4, 4 off this. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where it would dig down. Now this one is the desert flat. It doesn't appear too often. I had to teleport around quite a lot in this world to find one. However, again, still worth because it is very much um, findable. This one might be a bit difficult to explain as well. So we have this little pool here, this little pool of water. Notice it's past the, the tent with the bell on it. And I wanna went over here. There's this pillar here. It is always there as part of the bell structure. But this pillar, looking back to the bell, you're gonna to wanna to go two blocks to the right of that if you're looking at it from the pool. And that is where you would add four to each coordinate. However, if that's a little bit too treacherous, we could also have the way that Springs describes it, which is to stand in between the this little pool well thing and the pillar, and then just go two blocks back from there. Again, whichever works for you. I do accidentally break it here, but <laughs> you have to add four to each coordinate. And eventually, you know, you go one, one, two, three, and four. That is where you would dig down. Now we get to the Savannah Villages. The Savannah Villages I find to be really tricky. However, um, I'm going to try to break them down. This is the Savannah Single Well, I call it. We're going to be trying to look for... Um, logs that are not facing up and down, logs that are facing horizontally. You see how all of these are facing up and down? You, you probably never thought of this up until this point. All these logs are facing up and down, other than that one right there. That one right there is facing left and right. What is it doing? Well, that means it's very special. So what you want to do is you want to stand on the right side of it, meaning that the sideways log is three to your left. And you're going to want to do everything that we have... Um, same thing that we have done at the, the Plains Wells, where you go over three, up two, and then four, four off there. That's where you would dig down. Next, we get to the Savannah Triple Tent. This is the exact same as the Plains Triple Tent. This one I find even easier because there is a bell on your left-hand side. Well, at least from my left-hand side on this, on this specific instance. But looking at it from this angle, it's actually on the right. So that means that is where you want to dig down at. Well, that's where you want to calculate from. So, then you just add four to each coordinate off this. And that's where you would dig down. This one is a little bit tricky. I have a few ways of describing this. Now, this one is like, oof, how are you going to find this? Well, it's, it's kind of simple. You're going to want to dig down the same block as the bell. You want to dig down two blocks here and then punch out both the left and the right. So there is this um, up and down log and then there's a left and right log. Vertical and horizontal if you want to be technical with it. Then you'd like to jump up onto the side with the straight up and down log. Um, you could stand here, go up. It would actually be going left three and then up two and you would still get to the pumpkin as I do here. What we could also do is you can stand on the left side of it and only go up two and then left two, or you can go diagonally. I don't know, but that the pumpkin is where you would add four to each coordinate from. So really this is, this is up to you on how you'd like to get here. But Springs describes it as you going as standing on um, the first, as the first thing that I said. The first method. All right, next up, we have the colorful well. This well is very tricky. Um, very, very tricky. After after watching Spring Strats, I, I have a very abnormal well. But this one will be really tricky to describe. So you see these yellow terracotta here? Look really closely at them, really, really closely. And you can see the grain is pointing inward toward these logs that I've put there. Like the, the little, very faint lines are pointing that way. And it's the same with this one here. However, this one is facing horizontally, all right? And that one is too. 
but that one doesn't have a bell. It has a torch, so we're not looking for that one. We're looking for the one that has the bell here. So you're going to want to stand on the right and just go over, go to the right three and go up two, and this is where you would add four to each coordinate. You can see this way works as well as that way, one, two, three, and four, and that is where you would dig down at that redstone block. Moving on to the snowy variants. These ones, I think, are very difficult. So simply, oh, by the way, does it look familiar? There's the villagers in the background, <laughs> little Easter egg. So you're gonna wanna look at the top here, the very perimeter of this bell structure. And you're gonna to wanna to look for logs that are entirely smooth. All three of them will be facing left and right and not up and down. But you see looking here, I'm giving you some examples of one that aren't exactly facing that they aren't they aren't the smooth ones. This side here is the smooth side. They're all facing left and right. So you're gonna to want to stand in here and you're gonna to want to face the way that all of them are smooth. All of them are facing left and right. Look that way. And then you're gonna go three to the right, two up, and then add four to each coordinate from here. That way is the right way, that way is not, that way is. So then one, two, three, and then you dig down at the redstone block. Moving on to the L bell, as I call it. This is the uh, the snowy ice spike, it's also referred to as. But this one you're gonna be looking for literally a small L. It's going to be four blocks on the left and then just one blocks up, or one block up. This one's a big L, it's got the six blocks, that one's a backwards L, the first one was a backwards big L. This one is the regular, this is the one, someone that you're looking for. Once you have found it, you're gonna to wanna to stand on the it would be the left side if you're looking at it. And you see here, the L is right behind me. And again, go three blocks to your right and two blocks forward. And then from there, you're just gonna add four to each coordinate. You see the method I'm trying to do this in. And this one would be funny because I'd be digging down in a villager's house. Moving on to maybe our last one. No, just kidding, there's, there's, there's a trick after this. This one has one singular bell and a bunch of ice. What we're only gonna do is you're gonna wanna see the bell and go to the right of that, then go past the well so you can see the bell behind you as I do right here. Once you're standing here, face the opposite direction of the bell and then just go to your right three blocks and then move up two and that is where you would calculate from. We'll add four to both coordinates. One, two, three, four, and then if I break this piece of ice there, that is where you would dig down. And then finally, I have an imposter one for you. Ooh, the big scary double, uh, <laughs> double tent. This one isn't an actual bell structure, it's just a lie, despite the fact that it has a bell and tents. It's not a triple tent, and it's not it, it, it's not the center of the village, this isn't the village spawn point. The village spawn point is actually to the left of where we are, because there's the plain square bell. And I'm going to show you guys a quick demonstration of what I do when I don't have support from this. See, you go to the, go to the right side, so the bell is three blocks to the left, one block um, one block behind you, and three, two, and then we would, three blocks to the right, two blocks forward, and we would simply find four, four, and that is where I would dig down. But this bell's a lie. Don't trust it. It's an imposter from among us. Don't trust it. All right? So, I'm going to go over some things really quick. Again, all credit goes to Springs MC. I'll have the, the um, playlist in the description. And please, if you're going to try to dig down, I would suggest digging down at villages of 800, 800, 800, 200, or 700, 300. In any order, that could be neg negative 700, negative 300, negative 200, negative 800, positive 800, negative 200. Um, you'd have a better chance there. And with all that being said, please fly around in creative mode and try to test these out before you get in a run. Practice is key to success. Um, if, please, if you have any comments, um, questioning, hey, what's going on here, if you need further information, let me know. 
please use the playlist, ask questions, do whatever you need to do. I want to make sure you all have this down squat because this is very technical stuff. Again, all credit goes to Springs MC for this. And we will see you all in the next episode of the Sub 30 series.